Hello, I'm Lawrence Belden Smythe, United Kingdomite, seeking out truth in the United States. It's my quest to explore every nook and cranny of this vast nation for as long as I'm being paid to do so. I came to the great international city of New York to explore a global cultural icon, something you may have noticed I'm pretty well in touch with. Yes, that's right. Fashion. In my quest for the truth, I met a fashion photographer in her natural environment, taking photos. That's good. I met all the people running around backstage at a fashion show, and I move in with a real New York model to reveal exclusively what life is like away from the catwalk. So let's strike a pose or do whatever models do, as long as it doesn't involve too much lipstick. Because my name is Lawrence and this is America. I'll pack my favorite trousers, my toothbrush and my comb, cause America is calling me. New York City is the biggest city in the state of New York, which is a state known for being the home of New York City. This massive city is constantly alive. Want sushi with peanut butter and ham at 3 a.m.? No problem. I, I don't eat that. I, I just picked something unusual. Not that there's anything wrong with it. The Bizarre Foods chap probably eats it for breakfast. Anyway, New York City is a global fashion mecca. Everywhere you look, thin young people are strutting catwalks, looking disinterestedly beautiful while draped in someone's idea of style. What exactly is fashion? Who better to ask than total strangers on the streets of Manhattan? Are you fashionable? No. No? Not particularly, no. Is it important to be fashionable? It's the most important thing in life. Really? Yes. More important than God. Do you, do you think a lot about what, uh, what you wear? Yeah, I do, especially when I come out of my house. And is this, is, this is pierced in your lip? That's correct. Is, is that something that people do now in New York? Um, did you just get here? I mean, yeah, I guess so. Can you describe your ensemble for us? Jeans, t-shirt, and shoes. Are there any fashion no-nos? Um... It's, it's good to iron your shirts before you walk outside with them. Clearly, New Yorkers care about their clothing choices, but who are the people who help them choose what those choices should be? My research proved surprising. I can now exclusively reveal the creative core of the New York fashion industry resides in a previously undocumented region known to locals as Brooklyn. Here, obscure young designers are gathering together like blood clots, planning their eventual takeover of the fashion world. So rather than waste time talking to the same old boring famous names, this reporter chose to become embedded with fashion's future. Besides, the famous names wouldn't talk to me, and I still have 25 minutes to fill. A perfect example of this future is a Brooklyn fashion house known as Love Brigade. These two Lilliputian women have created their own label, and they're actually getting people who aren't their relatives to buy it. Well, well can you tell me about this pair of trousers here? <laughs> um, those are the uh, fuchsia swipe swipe trousers, and they have that name because there's an inset taken out of the knee, it's kind of like a side swipe, and they're in the fuchsia painted denim. So this is for a bloke, right? No, no, no. These no, are, are women. This is women. I mean, they. It would oh. go well with your shirt, Lawrence. You should yeah. try them. I was, uh, <laughs> completely wrong, didn't I? <laughs> When not cutting the knees out of trousers, Love Brigade offers a retail outlet for other local designers, all striving to hack off their own piece of the fashion blanket. What does it say? How it, says, it says, how quickly daft jumping zebras vex, is this one. And Why so, did you, what does that mean? It means nothing. When you got dressed this morning, did you think a lot about what you were going to wear? Um... You know, a good T-shirt with funky drawing on it, you know, a regular pair of jeans, you know, got to coordinate the shoes, of course. Are you fashionable? Uh, usually, I, th I think so, hopefully. I, uh, I pay attention to what I wear. I pay attention to what other people are wearing. I read fashion magazines. One way these fresh fish of fashion spread the word of their genius is the photograph. 
special professional photo takers are hired to ensure the clothing looks its best. I reveal exclusive behind-the-scenes secrets at a hot, edgy and rubbish-filled photo shoot, next! I'm in New York City, looking at the people who live in the fringes of the fashion subculture. It appears the clothing itself is only one small piece of this unusual industry. The marketing that surrounds it is vital. In rarely seen Brooklyn, young clothing designers hire photographers to make their clothes look more, well, viable, I suppose, to the couture-conscious consumer. These photographers find the best possible way to draw attention to the clothes and the beautiful person they're draped upon. I found one of these picture takers embarking on a shoot, as it's known, and I was given exclusive access. We have this really cool uh, sort of uh, distressed cocktail dress. So it's kind of interesting to have it in a sort of uh, dilapidated environment, sort yeah. of like very opposite of where you might see it. Yeah. I'm yeah. having my cocktails in the ghetto. Yeah, basically. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't care. With my media credentials clearly evident, I was soon asked to assist. There's an old sock down here, is it? It's unclear when assist was converted to remove rubbish, but I persisted in the name of truth, international harmony, and because I had to. That's really nice, actually. Beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. So you're saying things to encourage her? Yeah, you want to encourage her. Yeah. That's good. And you want to make her feel really comfortable. That's beautiful. Stay just like that. It was decided a male model was required. As none were available, this reporter kindly offered to fill the void with his humble yet smoldering good looks. Eventually, the offer was accepted. Even though your back is going to be to me, yes, you have to try to give me your front. I'll give you my front with my back? Yeah. <laughs> give me the struggle. Let me see the struggle. That was pretty good, actually. That's good. And with a higher like that, that's awesome. So I've got to look, re I've got to look regal. regal. OK, just try to. I think you're better than everybody else. Well, I do. As I stood there looking glamorous, it became obvious being a model is possibly the hardest occupation on the planet. Except for journalism, that's much harder. And bricklayer, those guys are tough. And used car salesman. And librarian, how do they keep track of everything? And those people who look after whales, I don't even know how they begin that one. OK, so being a model is not the hardest occupation on the planet, but it's definitely in the top ten. <laughs> Photos are only one way the glamour pusses tell us regular folk, or ordinary Joes, as Americans say, what we'll be wearing next. Another way to discover tomorrow's must-haves, mustn't-haves and maybe-haves is the fashion parade, or fashion show, as it's called in America. At these events, designers hang their latest creations on impossibly pretty, long-limbed people whose awkward gait apparently helps sell the clothes. The New York-Brooklyn area is awash in these shows. I was given exclusive backstage access to this one under the Brooklyn Bridge. It was celebrating a cultural event known as Brooklyn Fashion Week, where local up-and-coming designers reveal next year's sensations. Well, they hope they are anyway. The local paparazzi caught me arriving. My worldly charisma must have been on high beam because they all took pictures, despite having absolutely no idea who I was. Ah, fashion folk. Okay, give me a Zoolander, give me a Zoolander. <laughs> Before the show, backstage was a frenzy of makeup, hair care, soon to be fashionable attire, and nervous designers. Uh, so, what are you doing here tonight? Well, I'm actually the production director. I'm directing the whole of what you've seen here backstage. Really? Yes, I get together the models and the models with the, with the, um, the designers, the stylists, the creative team, and it, it is an orderly chaos, but I know what's going on. There were models everywhere. The women came in all shapes and sizes, from very thin to quite thin to thin-ish. The men were all muscly, every single one. 
Uh, do you feel a little exposed when you go out on the catwalk dressed like this? Yes, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> what does it feel like having all those people, you know, staring at you? It's quite nice. I'm not very shy or modest or anything like that, so yeah. it's all good. It's all good. What's it like being a model? I love being a model. It's hectic. It's it's awesome. You got to like run around and like just backstage, get your hair and makeup. Ten seconds, it's all done. Uh, I think they're just wanting natural, shiny face. Natural and shiny. Yeah, and then the hair, they want it to look like we've had facelifts. They, they want you to look like you've had a facelift? Yeah. Is that because they want to sell these clothes to 70-year-old women? I don't know. They just want it to look very severe tonight. Wow. Yeah. So bad plastic surgery is in this year? <laughs> Maybe. We'll have to see. What's going through your head when you're out on the runway? I'm, I just tell myself when I'm there to just be fierce and just go. Don't let... Be fierce? Yep. Arr! Can you give us your model face to the camera? Yeah. As the anticipation built among the audience, backstage the first designer herded the models towards the stage. And then, like a well-oiled, skinny machine, this shambolic scene suddenly became a fashion show. As I watched and absorbed, it became obvious this fashion subculture is as much about the models as the clothes draped on them. But what do these people do when they're at home? Is it all as glamorous and sexy as I hope it is? I'm at home with a New York fashion model, next. New York City, or the Big Apple as it's known, for reasons that shall remain a mystery, it's not as if it looks like an apple, and it certainly doesn't smell like one, is home to taxis, tourists, and that most elusive of residents, the fashion model. Who are these ridiculously attractive people? Where do they live? And what do they do when they're at home? Fortunately, my investigation introduced me to a very nice young lady named Lauren, who lives in Manhattan and earns a living wearing the clothes of others while looking somewhat aggrieved. So after Lauren and I hit it off at the fashion show, she agreed to grant us exclusive access to see a model in her natural habitat. So let's go and take a peek at the mysterious and glamorous world of a model at home in her Manhattan apartment. Hi, you wanna come in? Sure, yes, thank you for, for showing us around, wow. Yeah. Is, um... As I entered, one thing became obvious. New York rental prices must be extraordinary. Well, this is very nice. Um, this is your sort of living room area, I guess? Uh, living room. Where's the bedroom? Bedroom when this folds out. Right. Yeah. How many square feet is this? Small square feet. <laughs> <laughs> I can usually wash the dishes while I'm sleeping. It's nice. As I'd committed an afternoon to this aspect of my investigation, I thought the tour would take longer, to be honest, I decided to join Lauren in living like a glamorous New York model for a few hours. Fascinating. A model's life is just as dull as the rest of us. Eventually, Lauren agreed to take me into her bathroom to show me some makeup secrets. And at that point, I was too bored to say no. Go like this. <laughs> if my mother's watching, I, I didn't enjoy any of this. That lipstick clashed horribly with my eyeshadow. So Lauren then offered tips on posing, which some models are known to have perfected. Break the wrists. Break them? Yeah. Like, Ow. There. <laughs> broke my wrist. Give your best, like, tough face. Look good. <laughs> yeah. These okay. moves are only to be performed by professionals and worldly journalists. Casual. Youngsters, don't try this at home. Here, you want to pose together? Yeah. Okay. okay. So sexy. Ooh. 
I didn't do very much there. Yeah, your boys usually don't. They don't? Uh -uh. They just... Mm -hmm. That's sexy, is it? Mm -hmm. Working with Lauren in her alleged apartment gave me a unique insight into modelling and also revealed an important fact. I'm a little claustrophobic. So, to relieve my growing anxiety, I visited the most open space one can find in New York City, the famous Central Park. The weather was mild, which brought the locals out to bask like giant sea elephants on the Galapagos Islands and it left them vulnerable to the Bolden Smythe truth stick. I'm talking about my microphone, nothing else. I've learned that lesson. Your ensemble today, can you tell us about it? What do you think the life of a model is like? Um, I think it's pretty easy. I used to do catering for photo shoots, and it looks like a good life. Yeah? Yeah, they just kind of get pampered on and live off their looks. It looks pretty easy. They're intimidating, though. They're too tall. Really? Yeah. I'd never approach one. The, uh, the cut pants where, the, where women's ankles just kind of stick out, that just seems like in, inappropriate to me. It seems very bizarre. Did the ankles stick out? Well, uh, they have their, 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 their trousers are cut about here, and they have, like, you know, they have these, these skinny little ankles hanging out, and it, oh, just, right. it just seems very bizarre. Can you, could you give us a couple of model poses? Model poses, huh? I don't, I'm not sure if I know any. Just, just strike a pose. No, just give, give the camera a look, if you can. I've looked at this fashion subculture from the perspective of the up-and-comer, the fringe dweller, the maybe if I get some luck I'll pay the rent this month but probably won't and will have to go back to living in my mother's basement and listening to her annoying new boyfriend play his banjo while eating walnuts type. It was time to change tracks, to learn more about fashion from the eye of the consumer. I go undercover to explore New York fringe fashion stores next. The New York area is a hub of all things fashion and the people striving to be successful at it. It's also filled with people striving to look fashionable. To learn more about the whole looking fashionable thing, not that I need to as I'm pretty groovy already, I decided to go undercover and explore local merchants and the goods they sell of a clothing nature. Local fashionista Daniel Saint kindly agreed to be my guide in this strange new world. Uh, what we're going to do right now, we're going to change your look. You know, we're going to change your top and, and give you some more of a street More of look. a street thing. Daniel offered his opinions, but it was clear he didn't really know how to dress a Belden Smythe. Besides, I've been choosing my own clothes for over three years now. I rest my case. Um, yeah. I, I can do see I, it. Do I look the part? You slap his skateboard on you, I think we can make this work. <laughs> Who would I be wearing this? Um, where would you be? You would be uh, chilling with your homies, uh, and you can do that. <laughs> chilling with homies? That's, <laughs> chilling with that's, homies. That's legal in the state? To bring it down a bit. This whole chilling business didn't seem that attractive, and there's no way that jacket was warm enough. On to the next stop on this truth crawl. What is this place? Well, you know, I figured you didn't really like the, um, you know, skater type look. So I figured I'd take you here to Patricia Fields. It's one of the New York institutions. You find a lot of, of the club kids coming here, a lot of, like, the New York rockers really coming here and representing their style here, as well as a great amount of drag and different things like that. So it's a completely different culture with, within New York. This store apparently caters to a range of interests, including the New York male who wants to look fashionable dressed as a New York female. After some thought, I decided not to go in that direction for this particular investigation. Maybe later. Hey, look at this guy. Yeah? All right. Uh, it's ready to take on the town. Who am I? Where would I be going dressed like this? Oh, uh, you know, the local bar, you know, picking up some chicks, getting a drink with the, with the buddies, you know, something like that. Dressed to impress, but you're still very, uh, you're not demasculated, I don't think. I don't feel demasculated. Yeah, so. Can you give me, like, a, 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 an opening line? You know, I walk into a bar and I see a nice chick, what do I say? Oh, God, I don't know if anything's ready for the TV. I'd say, <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> nice shoes, let's do it. <laughs> nice shoes, let's do it. Yeah. Does it work? Nah. <laughs> Our final stop promised a glimpse of fashion with the class and distinction I'm more familiar with. Refined, elegant, 
with a hint of haughty. Look it up. Let's see what we got. Well, it's certainly a statement. Definitely a statement. I think your designer might have left something out. What? Sleeves. Mmm. <laughs> Possibly. No, it, it's a good look, you know? You go with the, uh, the whole cape and... And you're far too important to use your hands anyway. I don't need my arms. You don't need your because arms. Because I'm a fashionista. You're a fashionista now. I um, guess I can go like this. You can... Uh, uh, yeah, there, there you go. There we go. Hello. So, are, are capes, capes very popular at the moment? You know, capes aren't super popular right now, but they are a statement. How practical is this, though? Not the most practical, um, you know, piece of fashion, but, you know, no one said fashion had to be practical. And someone will, someone will actually buy this? Yeah, they, they would. I've actually seen these on the streets before, so really? they're bought. Taxi! Taxi! Whilst this look was appealing, the practical applications proved limited. I can now reveal sacrificing for the sake of fashion can be a tad idiotic. But this final foray into fashion did cap off a fascinating examination of the people involved in this previously secret industry. The fashion industry is filled with people who work hard trying to earn a living picking the fickle tastes of the public. Whether they're designers hoping their ideas will translate into money for food, oh, and the next global trend, of course, models hoping their face, body and strange facial expressions will attract enough attention to get them out of their cupboard of an apartment, or groovy New York clothing retailers hoping to convince a fashion-conscious public you really don't need your arms. These people are the real fashion industry. I salute you fashion industry types here in the Big Apple for your taste, beauty and determination. Without you telling us what we should be wearing and changing your mind constantly, we'd never feel compelled to spend slabs of cash trying to fit in. Until next time, reporting from New York City, this is Lawrence Belden-Smythe.